Hey, what's going on guys, it's Jonathan and welcome back to another video. In this video, I wanna cover some issues that I personally have encountered with the iPhone 10 in about 48 hours. I'm sure your sub boxes are loaded with iPhone 10 coverage, but I wanna give you the issues that I've encountered so far just using the iPhone 10 as my daily driver. Luckily, all the issues that I have encountered can be fixed with a software update, but nonetheless, they're there and I wanna make sure you guys are aware of them. Plus, if there's any developers out there that are watching this video, maybe you can get a head start on fixing the issues now. So the first issue is with the little line at the bottom of the screen. Now I know that's like a navigation symbol to let you know that you have to swipe up to go home. So instead of having a home button, you have this little line. And when you're browsing websites using Chrome or even Safari, uh, sometimes it blocks the writing at the bottom of the display, interfering with your visibility. And I don't really like that. Personally, what I would like to see is the line completely gone or the option within the accessibility settings to enable it or disable it. Problem number two is with True Tone Display. True Tone Display works marvels when you're talking about it on the iPad, the iPhone 8, or the iPhone 8 Plus. But on the iPhone 10, it just, it doesn't work as good. And I think that's because of the OLED display. True Tone Display works by setting the white balance of your display based on the environment you're in by using the camera and the sensors on the front of your phone or iPad. In other words, if you're in a warm environment, it's going to cool down your display a little bit to give you an accurate reading. So whenever you're viewing pictures, you're gonna have an accurate representation of what you're viewing. True Tone Display definitely works on the iPhone 10, but it works a little bit too good. In other words, if it has to warm up your display, it's going to warm it up and make things a little bit yellow. You can always disable True Tone Display within the settings. And once you do, you're gonna see your display get super cold and it's gonna look ridiculously ugly, but your eyes just need to have time to adjust you'll get used to it and it will look a little bit better. Now, once they push out an update to basically tweak True Tone Display on OLED technology, we're gonna have you know the same experience that we have on the iPhone 8, iPhone 8 Plus, and the iPads. Issue number three has to do with the camera. Now, the iPhone 10 is the only phone from Apple to feature uh, optical image stabilization in the telephoto lens. And with that being said, it's a bit wonky. So basically when you open the camera app and you switch to the telephoto lens, sometimes the stabilization just isn't activated. You can see the shakiness and then once it kicks in, you'll see it just all of a sudden, boom, get stable. But it's weird because optical image stabilization is a hardware feature, but it's almost like they're combining EIS with OIS and that's the reason why this issue is occurring. Granted, yes, you do have to have the software side of things to get the hardware features to function correctly. So again, I think this could be fixed with an update easily. Issue number four has to do with the camera still and it's with the exposure slider. I really don't understand what's happening here. So in the past, you could always adjust your exposure by sliding it down or up depending on your needs. So what I noticed is when I dial the exposure down and it darkens the image, once I take the picture, it's even darker than what I was seeing prior to taking the picture. So it doesn't give you an accurate representation of what you're taking a picture of. I would just be careful if you're using the slider to expose your image, just make sure it's a little bit lighter than what you're wanting. So if, if you want it to be super dark, make sure it's a little bit lighter than being super dark on the display prior to taking the picture. So issue number five has to do with the bugs and glitches I found just navigating to the phone and using iOS 11.1. Now, if you remember in my iPhone 8 and 8 Plus review, I mentioned how buggy iOS 11 was, but then they recently pushed out 11.1 and it did squash a lot of those bugs, but it drains my battery significantly more on my 8 Plus than it did prior. With the iPhone 10, however, I've noticed many, many glitches and bugs such as the camera app just automatically shutting down as soon as I open it, or uh, it getting stuck in landscape mode and then the display doesn't even look correct uh, once it's in landscape mode. So I don't really know, but again, these are all software issues. I just hope that 11.2 or 11.1321, whatever update they push out next does fix a lot of this. So issue number six has to do with battery life, but I, I have gotten better battery life now after going through about three or four cycles. So if you guys are getting your iPhone 10 for the first time, just know that the first one to two, maybe even three cycles, you might get crappy battery life. And I was getting like three to four hours of use on um, my first two cycles. And then after that, it did get a little bit better. So just know in the back of your head that yes, the battery life is going to get better, uh, but you're not gonna get as good of battery life as you would with the eight plus. So issue number seven has to do with the aggressive behavior of auto brightness. So if you walk outside, there's really like no happy medium. It's just gonna crank itself up. And if you're in a dim area, it's gonna crank itself down. And when it does that, if you're using true tone display, it really shows 
the yellow side of things and that ugly face just comes out. And if you go out in daylight and it cranks itself up too high, the colors look a little washed out. And of course it's going to drain your battery even more. So there's just no happy medium. Oh yeah, and speaking of bringing back features, uh, with issue number eight, please, please Apple, bring back the numeric percentage in the battery icon. You don't have to put it next to the battery icon. I get it. It might take up too much space. Put it inside the battery, just bring it back. Have the option to enable it if people want it, like me. I understand you could swipe over on your home screen and if you have the battery widget enabled, you can see it that way, but I, I kind of miss having it up in the notification bar, so just, just bring it back, come on, please. But yeah, guys, that was eight issues that I personally have encountered with my iPhone 10 within 48 hours. I'm sure that's not all of them. If there's anything that you're experiencing that I didn't talk about, leave it down in a comment below as I would love to look into it. Plus, you're helping out people that haven't received their iPhone 10 yet and letting them know what to expect. And of course, maybe we can all act as a community and try to figure out how to fix these problems. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, drop it a thumbs up. If you didn't, well, still drop it a thumbs up because you're still helping me and the channel out. Uh, go ahead and subscribe if you're not already subscribed. If you already are subscribed, turn on those notifications so you can be alerted when a new video drops. If you wanna hit me up on social, go ahead and do that as I do respond faster there. And um, yeah, I'll talk to you in the next one. Be easy.